Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. Welcome to the documentation for the Divi events calendar. So in this video, we are going to be looking at some of the content settings in the events feed module. All right, so let's take a look here. So here I am on a regular page. I'm on our demo site right now. So I'm just gonna add a row, with one column. So then when I would type in to find our plugin, I can say something like event. And there you can see all the modules. So I'm going to choose events feed. Now by default, there's going to be certain layouts and certain designs and things like that, but that really doesn't matter. Right now we're focusing on the content and that would be in the content tab and in this first toggle here and a couple other toggles as well, but mostly right here. So the first thing that you may see is dynamic events. And again, I should point out that every single one of the settings here has this little question mark that'll explain something to you. So like for this one here, I could just read it or you could read it, you know, you, this is to choose to turn on dynamic content. This is going to allow you to place this module in a theme builder template. So you might want it on an events category page, or you may want to put it on a single event page, like at the bottom, to show like three other events, you know, it might be viewing the main event, but you want to show three other ones. So you could use it for things like that. You can use it for search results. So it's, it's dynamic. All the content is going to come in dynamically. So you would use that for on a theme builder template. Other, you wouldn't use this setting any other time. So if I would turn that on, you know, it, it's not going to really know what to do on a page, so it's not gonna work. So you just keep that off unless you're in the theme builder. Now the next one's kind of obvious, but event status, I wasn't quite sure the terminology to use for that, but um, just whether you wanna show future or past events. And some people ask me, well, how do I show both in the same module? Well, that's not possible. It, it wouldn't really make sense because what, they're gonna to come to the page and then when would it start? Like how far back would, would the first event be like from 10 years ago? That wouldn't really make sense. All you have to do, if you want to show past events, maybe you want to show a separate page. I recommend just duplicating the module, you know, have one module be future and one be past. It's really that simple. The next thing is events order. And this was kind of simple, but ascending or descending. The reason we added this setting, some people would say, well, in my country, we always show um, the, the the events like in a certain order, like the newest ones first or the oldest ones first. And I, at first, I was really confused. Like, why would you do that differently? Like, if I chose um, past events, it, in you know, in the U.S. here, it would make sense that I would see um, the one from yesterday first, the one from three days ago next, you know, rather than seeing the ones from ten years ago first. But anyway. The, the events order would mostly kind of work with the event status. I feel like those two would go together. I mean, you could change that, but why would you want to, I don't think you'd want to be like choosing, putting in your future most events first. So anyway, the event count, that's very simple to understand. It just changes how many events are showing. I changed it to one and now just one is showing. Really simple. You might want to change the three, whatever you want it. It is on the six by default. And that's just because, you know, it works great with the grid there. Now, keep in mind that that would go really well with pagination. So like if if you had wanted to just show like three or something, but then wanted options to show more, you could turn on pagination. We'll talk about that in another video. Next is included categories. So basically, this is what it sounds like in this feed right here. Without changing anything, without checking any of these boxes, it's going to show all events. It's not limited by category or anything like that. Now, if I only want to show events that are in the music category, I could select that. And then you may say, well, I want to show events that are in the music, but also outdoor. Then you could select more, maybe also in parties. Now, it's not an event that's in all three of those. It's it's not an and statement. It's, it's a or statement. So... Um, you're going to see events here that are in music or in outdoors or in parties, not necessarily all three. Okay. One event won't be in all three necessarily. So there you go. You can choose which categories you want. Um, and again, if, if you don't want to narrow that down at all, keep it all categories would just be when there's nothing selected. 
This next option is for, um, it says only show featured events. And the reason that word only is there because that is how it works. So I'll show you here. So here I am in the back end editing this particular event. And down here on the right side, notice there's this event options little box here. Right here it says feature event. Now this is a feature of the events calendar. And recently in version 2.1, we've added support for this. So if, if this item is selected, um, it's kind of like, in my opinion, I would recommend using a category. Create an event category and call it featured events rather than using this because the reason is now we're gonna this one's saved as featured event so on the front end here if i turn on this toggle again it's only there's no option for us to mix featured events and other categories now if it was a category up here that would be a different story so keep that in mind in my opinion i would not use this um, because of that reason but if you if you want to like like you're using that feature already in the events calendar and you want to show like a grid of three and you could be like, check out our three featured events, right? You could put a headline above it. Then great, there you go. That's an option for you. Now this next option is called show recurring events. Now this will only work with the pro version of the events calendar. Now the recurring events are like I said they're not in the they're not in the free version so we've added we're slowly adding support for pro features from their plugin basically what that means is like if I would um if I would go have the pro installed and I would go set up an event I might want an event to show every Monday night at seven o'clock and you can actually modify it in one event and I don't have it up I don't even know if I have the pro installed so I can't really show you um, but if I did have it installed, basically it would, keeping this on is, is showing all of them. So it'll show every Monday night as an, as a different event, as a totally different event. Now, if I turn this off and you have recurring events, it'll only show the first one. So if you are using the pro version and you're using recurring events, then there you go. There's an option for you. We've just added that in 2.1. Now the other options here are date format. And honestly, I don't necessarily recommend using this unless you know what you're doing because there's already date formats two different places. Let me show you that. So back here, right here, we're in the events calendar settings. Well, right here we are. So if I go down, let's see, I don't even know which tab it's on. It might be on dis display right here, date format settings. So we already have this and this is in the events calendar. Now I want to show you another place. So if I go to settings here, general settings, just in WordPress general settings, we have date and time formats. So go ahead and use those. The reason we have them in the modules, we have them in all of our modules. You may want it to show up differently here than in another plugin or another display on your website, something like that. So that's why we have the date format and the time format here. And again, this is going to be taking those um, PHP expressions here that you'll see, like here, for example, FJY, right? A custom one, and you can look these up. Uh, maybe we'll do a tutorial on those on our blog, but the date and time again is sort of like an override for your already existing date formats that you've already set. So whatever you set in the events calendar or in WordPress settings, that will apply. So you don't, you don't necessarily need to worry about that. Now the excerpt length, that's this here, obviously. Um, it's, it could get out of hand if you had a really long excerpt. Now I don't recommend going over 270 because that's what WordPress has by default because it's supposed to be a summary of your post type. So for you, it should be a summary of your event. Now I could change this. Let's say I only want 10 words to show or sorry, 10 characters to show, <laughs> um, not words, it's characters. So you can see right there is, um, 10 characters showing now. I can get rid of that or uh, click the little reset button. And, and sorry if I said words, it's characters. So there you go. Um, again, I, I, why not just make your excerpts um, a nice consistent length? But uh, there you go. Now this event offset number. This can be confusing if you've never heard of this. Now this is in the blog module in Divi. It allows you to do 
different layouts on the same page in the same section and be able to skip the layout. Like I'm going to show you. Okay. So this module right here, let's put, let's say I, ha let's say I only want one event here and let's change my layout maybe to a list or something. Let's say I have one, I have one event show. And now let's say I duplicate this module, but now below here, I want to kind of break things up. I want to have a grid and I want to show three events and I may be wanting to put a category like above here. I might put a headline that says latest event, right? And, th and that's it. But down here, notice how this event is the same one. Well, I don't want that. So if I go in here to offset, watch what happens when I choose just one. Now the offset number is the number of events that I want to skip. So if I choose one, watch what happens. It skips that first one in this module down here. Now, if I was to change this to two, you know, you can probably get the idea where I'm going with this. See how the fireworks one is on both. And then you would change the offset to two right there. There you go. That's the offset. Um, I'll just sort of undo some of this here. I'll reset my module. All right, so that covers everything in this content tab. Now there's other elements, obviously. All of these things here are related to the details. We're going to get into some of that in another video. So right in this video, I just wanted to cover the content pagination. We're going to talk about that in another video. We have a bunch of options for that and then design settings and everything. So that covers everything in this content. I hope that was helpful. Just looking at some of the ways you can display content and there's other content, you know, don't get me wrong. Even like, even like what we call the call out or the way we display even in layout, you know, for example, we choose lists, you're technically choosing which content, you know, is included, you know, and I get that that could be considered content. But for me, in this video, I'm, I'm specifically thinking of things in here. All right, hope that was helpful.